Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hall. I'll be your instructor for biology. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. Now, if you don't already have this installed in your device, I would like you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Now, exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams. Exams such as the UTME, the post-UTME, WIAC, GCE, IGMB, KCPE, JUPEB, Calbepedia. In the junior sections, we also have the BECE, we have the JSCE, and so much more. Now, you can download the app from www.examguide.com or you visit the Google Play Store to download. Now, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to update yourselves on new videos that will be coming up. Now, if you're ready for this class, let's get started. Today, we're going to be discussing basic ecological concept. Basic ecological concept. Now, in this particular topic, we're strictly going to be looking at ecology, strictly on ecology. And um, we're going to be looking at some specific objectives, things you should take note of at the end of this class. One, you should be able to define ecology and mention the branches of ecology. Define ecology and mention the branches of ecology. Number two, you should be able to mention some ecological concepts and up to the point of defining them. To mention and also define some ecological concept. Number three, you should be able to outline the local biotic communities in Nigeria. Outline the local biotic communities in Nigeria. Number four, you should be able to outline the biotic communities in the world. So we're going to be looking at several biotic communities in the world, few characteristics and um, locations or where you can find most of these um, biotic communities, both in Nigeria and as well as in the world. Like I said before, we are looking at ecology, which is also known as environmental biology. Now, quickly, let's move into definition of ecology. Now, as we have here, um, ecology is actually one of the branches, one of the major branches of biology. And it is actually, it actually deals with the study of living things and their relations with the environment. I repeat, ecology is a branch of science or branch of biology that deals with the study of living organisms in relation or how they relate with their environment. Like I said, it involves the interaction between organisms, not just organisms and the environment, interaction between organisms and between them and their also environment. Now, another name for ecology is called environmental biology. Ecology simply has to do with environment, all right, and how we relate with our environment. Now, we have two important branches of ecology, two branches of ecology. We have the orticology and then we have the synchology. Orticology and synchology. Now, the orticology is a branch of ecology that deals with the relationship between an individual plant or animal and their environment. It's a relationship between, a study of a relationship between just an individual plant or animal and how these individual plants or animals relate with their environment. An example is a study of an individual plant, let's say a lion or individual animal, let's say a lion, and how the lion relates with its environment. Then next, number two, we said it is called synchology. Synchology. Now, synchology is a branch of ecology that deals with the relationship between communities of living organisms and their environment. How they relate, how communities of organisms relate with their environment. Now, you're not just looking at an individual organism or you're not looking at an individual plant or animal. You're looking at a community of these animals or a community of plants. 
relating with their environment. An example of psychology is a study of different marine aquatic organisms and their relationship with the aquatic environment. Okay? A relationship between aquatic marine aquatic organisms and their environment, which is also an aquatic environment. So these are the two branches of ecology. Now, there are several terms you need to take note of when studying ecology. Several terms. You'll be hearing them over and over again. You keep hearing these words, but it's very important for you to have a knowledge of what they are and be able to define them so that you can be able to have a better understanding or comprehend the subject ecology. Now, first one we're going to be looking at is environment. You'll be hearing the word environment. I've already made use of it. It's called uh, ecology environmental biology. So now, what is the environment? The environment includes both living and non-living factors in a given area or surrounding. In your surrounding where you are, both living and non-living factors include your surrounding. So it means that the, 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 the atmosphere, the waters that surround us, they are also part of the environment. The soil that surrounds us, they are also part of the environment. Living things like plants and animals, they are also part of your what? Environment. Number two is biosphere. Now, biosphere is the zone of the earth where living things occupy or living things can be found to exist. The zones of the earth or the path of the earth occupied by living organisms. Now we have, based on this, we can divide biosphere into three major parts, which are also part of the ecological concept or terms we are looking at today. Number one, or let's put it as number three, it is the atmosphere. The atmosphere is also part of the biosphere. Why? Because it is a particular area where living organisms can also be found. Now, the atmosphere is the gaseous part of the Earth. It comprises of 21% of oxygen, 0.03% of carbon dioxide, okay, and 78% of nitrogen, and 0.97% of rare gases and so many other substances that can be found in the atmosphere. The next is the lithosphere. The lithosphere is the solid part. Remember we said the atmosphere is the gaseous part of the earth. The lithosphere is the solid part of the earth. Now the solid part of the earth, it occupies about 30% of the earth's surface. It comprises of living organisms. You can see living organisms in the lithosphere. It also comprises of rocks or soil, and then it comprises of minerals. I repeat, it comprises of living, living organisms that are found in the lithosphere. It also comprises of minerals. It also comprises of rocks or soil samples. Then number five, we have the hydrosphere. It is the liquid part of the earth and it occupies about 70% of the Earth's surface, okay? Now, it consists of water and living organisms. So these three parts mix up the biosphere. Number six, we have what we call biomes or biotic community. Now, biotic community or biomes is any naturally occurring group of different organisms living together and interacting in the same environment. I repeat, it is any naturally occurring group of differently, different organisms living together and interacting in the same environment. A, bi a biome is the largest community of organisms. Biomes have the largest communities of organisms. Examples of biomes include things like the rainfall, we have the swamp, we have the alpha-alpine, we have the savanna, we have the deserts, we have the Sahil and so many other examples of biotic communities we have in the world. And we're going to be looking at most of them very shortly. Okay, the next one is ecological niche. Ecological niche. Please take note. Ecological niche is the specific portion or part of a habitat that is occupied by a species of organism and the role that organism plays in that habitat. 
It is not just where they occupy, but the roles of function they carry out in that particular part of the habitat. That is what we call ecological niche. That is what they call ecological niche. Number eight is population. Now, what is population? It is actually the total number of organisms of the same species living in a given area at a particular time. I repeat, it is the total number of organisms of the same species, please take note of that, of the same species living together in a given place or area and at a particular time. Number nine is what we call ecosystem. Ecosystem. Now, an ecosystem is a community of plants and animals functioning together with their non-living environment. Functioning together with their non-living environment. Okay? Now, today we're going to be looking at local biotic communities in Nigeria. Or you can call them local biomes in Nigeria. Remember we said that the biotic community are naturally occurring um, organisms that function together and uh, how they also relate with their environment. And we said that the biome is actually the largest community of organisms you can find. All right? So we're looking at, in Nigeria, we're looking at the biotic communities we have. Now, the biotic communities in Nigeria is divided into two main parts or zones. We have what we call the forest zone, and then we have also what we call savanna zone forest zone and savanna zone. Now let's take a look at what the forest zone is all about. Now the forest zone is divided also into two main biotic communities. But before we go into the two main biotic communities where you can, or zones, where you can find the forest zone, note that the forest zone comprises of vegetation with trees. That's what makes up the forest zone, mostly vegetation with trees, all right? Now, we have two types of forest zones. We have the mangrove swamp forest zone, and then we have the tropical rainforest zone. I repeat, we have the mangrove swamp forest zone, and then we have the tropical rainforest zone. Now, let's take a look at the mangrove swamp forest zone. As you can see, the mangrove swamp forest zone. They have several characteristics which we will be looking at shortly, but I want you to understand areas. Areas you, you can, uh, mangrove swamp forest can be located or found in Nigeria. Now you can see that in Cross River State, you can see it in Akwaibom, you can see it in Bayasa, you can also see it in River State, you can see it in Ogun State, you can also see it in Lagos State. I mean, these are areas where you can locate mangrove swamp forests. Mangrove swamp forest. Now, what are some of the characteristics that mix up a mangrove swamp forest? Or you can call them features of mangrove swamp forest. Number one is that it's water or the water because these are plants that are actually situated close to the water areas all right now the waters in this particular areas is simply a combination of fresh and salt water an example is the brackish waters okay we have the estuarine the estuarine brackish and or brackish are simply types or you can say it is a form or another name for mangrove swamp forest or mangrove swamp forest. There is a combination, the water, there is a combination of both fresh and then salt water. Now also in a mangrove swamp forest, the amount of rainfall is usually high. Amount of rainfall is usually high and you also see tall woody trees. You see tall woody trees and also they have evergreen trees with broad leaves and the, uh, plants you find there I include the red uh, mangrove swamp, the red mangrove, you have also the white mangrove, and you also have the raffia palm. These are three important plants you can see in the mangrove swamp forest. Now, what about animals that can be found in the mangrove swamp forest? We have things like the kingfisher, you have crabs, we can see snakes very well, yes. You can also have the tilapia fish, and so many other animals you can find 
in the mangrove swamp forest. Next, we're going to be looking at that's the second type of um, forest zone. For, for second type of forest zone is the tropical rainforest zone. Now, the tropical rainforest zone can be found in places like Abia State. We also have Lagos State. You have Anambra State. You can see a forest zone in Ogun State. You can also see a forest zone to an extent in River State. You can also see it in Akwaibom states and so many other states. Next is the characteristics of um, tropical rainforest. Now, one major characteristic of tropical rainforest is that it has trees. And these trees, they, are, they exist or are arranged in strata. When we say they are arranged in strata, it means they are arranged in layers. You have, uh, 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 um, well, I call it a high layer, okay? You have a middle, uh, and then you have a small layer, okay? In other words, if you look at the tree, the arrangement of the trees, the way they exist, they exist as if it is a staircase, okay? A staircase. So you have trees that are very large and high, okay? You have trees that are arranged in a high layer. You have the ones in middle layer, and then you have the ones in lower layers and just like that. So we said trees that exist in this form, we call them that, we say that these trees, they exist in strata. Also, in the tropical rainforest, you have high amount of rainfall. There's high amount of rainfall. And also in the tropical rainforest, with the trees, they have what we call buttress roots and evergreen leaves. Now, plants that can be found there in the tropical rainforest zones include the Iroko tree, we have the mahogany, we have the obeche, and so on. These are huge trees that can be found in tropical rainforest. And then animals that you can find there, you can find the monkeys, you can find the birds, you have snakes, we have squirrels there, and so on. These are some of the animals that can be found in tropical rainforests. Now, remember, we said something when we started this. I told you that the uh, biotic, local biotic communities in Nigeria are two zones. We have the tropical rain, sorry, we have the rainforest zone, rather, which we have just discussed. And we said we have two types, which is the mangrove swamp, and then we have the tropical rainforest. Okay, we have finished that. The next zone that is found in, the, in Nigeria, biotic zone found in Nigeria, is actually the savanna zone. The savanna zone. Now, the savanna zone comprises mainly of grasses. You find more of grasses. Now, in some books, you see it that the savanna zone is divided into three. Into three. We have the Southern Guinea savanna, we have the Northern Guinea savanna, we have the Sahil savanna. Okay, but in some other books, you will also see an inclusion, which is the desert. So we're going to be looking at these four different um, zones that are found in the savanna zones, or four different biotic communities found in the savanna zone. Number one is the Southern Guinea savanna. Southern Guinea savanna. Number two is the Northern Guinea savanna. Number three is the Sahil savanna. Number four is the desert. Now, let's start with the Southern Guinea savanna. As you can see, the Southern Guinea savanna is found in places like Kogi State, we have Benue State, we have Kwara State, we have Ebony State, we have the Oshun State, mostly at the west. That is where you see more of the Southern Guinea savanna. Now, what are the characteristics of Southern Guinea savanna? They have tall grasses. Remember, we said they comprise mainly of grasses. So you have existence of tall grasses. You also have the presence of tall trees with broad leaves. There are tall trees with broad leaves. And the amount of rainfall you find in Southern Guinea savanna are moderate. They are not very high like you can see in the swamp, mangrove swamp, and also in the tropical rainforest. No, they are moderate. Now, animals that can be found in the southern Guinea savanna includes the lion, we have leopard, we have the antelopes, and so on. These are uh, animals you can find there. And then plants that you can find there, you have the shea butter, you have the locust bean trees, and so on. These are some of the plants that can be found in southern Guinea savanna. Now, the Northern Guinea savanna is located in places like 
um, Niger State, we have the Bauchi State, we have the Kaduna State, we have Taraba, and so on. These are some of the places or locations you can find the Northern Guinea savanna. Next is characteristics of Northern Guinea savanna. Now, the Northern Guinea savanna is characterized with low rainfall. The amount of rainfall is not moderate as it is in Southern Guinea savanna, but it is low. Okay. Also, we said we, you can also observe that you have scattered and short deciduous trees. Scattered and short trees. And also you have short but numerous grasses. Short but numerous grasses. Now, plants that can be found here include the acacia. We have the silk curtains and so on. Animals that you can also see in this place, you have snakes. We have lions. We have deers. We have um, lizards and so on can be found in the Northern Guinea savanna. The Sahil savanna. Sahil savanna is located in areas like Casina states. Now these are areas, if you look at the screen, these are areas that are encroaching towards the desert. So there is desert encroachment, mostly in the Sahil savanna. So we have places like Casina, Sokoto, Yobe, Kebi, Kano, Zamfara, and so many other places that have the Sahil savanna. Now, they are characterized with short and scanty grasses, as you can see, short and scanty grasses, and also they have short and tough shrubs. And these shrubs have drought-resistant trees, or are drought-resistant. They are drought-resistant. So it means that they have uh, um, uh, mechanisms or adaptive features in order to um, um, combat drought. Now, plants that you can find here is the date palm. You also have the gum arabic plant and so on, or trees. And then also we have desert. Desert. Now, you find deserts in Nigeria, mostly at the northern borders of Sokoto. You can also find it at the northern borders also of Katsina, Jigawa, and Yobe states. All right? Now, what are some of the characteristics of desert? Now, we have... Um, little or no rainfall, okay, you have high temperature and low relative humidity. Now, there are also no grasses and shrubs that are found there. Now, some of that, you find some plants, okay, little or no grasses and shrubs that are found in the desert. You have a, a plant that you can actually see there is the cactus plant. Also in the desert, an, an animal you can also see there is the snake, mostly the rattle snakes. Now quickly let's move to major biotic communities in the world, major biotic communities of the world. We have the tropical rainforest, we have the savanna, we have the desert, we have the shrub, we have the afro-alpine, and then we have the swamp. Okay? These are um, bi major biomes in the world. Okay? Now let's take a look at tropical rainforest and let's see where it can be found. Now, the tropical rainforest in the world can be found in West Africa. It can be found in interior Malaysia. You can also see it in the Amazon Basin of uh, South America. You can also see it in Zaire Basin of Central Africa. Also, we have savanna. Savanna is also another um, um, major biomes of the world. Another name for savanna in some places, they call it different names. Another name for savanna can be called grassland. Okay? In grassland. So many uh, countries have several names. They call it Ilanus, Pampas, and so on. These are all referring to savanna. Okay? Savanna. Now we have two types of savanna. We have the tropical grasslands and then we have the temperate grasslands. Now, tropical grasslands, they are located in Central America. You can also see it in the northwest part of South America. You can also see it in interior of Brazil, West Africa, and so on. Now, these tropical grasslands, they consist of short and scattered trees. You also have tall grasses that are fibrous when old, and so on. And then we have the temperate grassland. The temperate grassland is located in South America, mostly in Argentina. You can also see it in North America, Asia, South America, and even in Australia. Now, what are the characteristics of temperate grasslands? We have abundance of grasses, 
and most of these grasses are succulent and then you also have scarceness of trees. You don't see much of trees in temperate grasslands. We also have another a biome or biotic community of the world which is the desert. We have also talked about that in Nigeria. We have desert but why I decided to talk more on the desert of the world is that we have two types of deserts. We have the hot desert and then we have the cold desert. Now the hot desert can be located in places like the Sahara Desert is a hot desert, an example. We have the Arabian Desert, we have the Iranian Desert. These are different hot deserts. Now what characterizes these hot deserts? We have temperature that is very high. The temperature is very, very high. And vegetation in hot deserts are usually scanty, very scanty. Then also evaporation is high and relative humidity is very low. Now, the cold desert is mostly located in North and South America. That's where you see the cold desert. Now, what are the characteristics of cold desert? It has short and scanty grasses and then it also has drought resistant plants. Now moving quickly to shrubs, shrubs. Now mostly shrubs can be found in West Africa, in Northern Eastern Brazil, and also in Australia. Now shrubs are characterized with very low uh, rainfall, very high temperature, and also drought resistance. The, the, trees are, the trees, or mostly the shrubs, are drought resistant, and they are dwarf trees, dwarf trees, okay? And then we have the Afro-Alfine. The Afro-Alfine, they are located mostly in the mountains. That's where you see Afro-Alfine. As you can see on the screen, you get them more in the mountains. And you can find them in places like the Cameroon Mountain, the Kenya Highlands, the Kilimanjaro Mountains, and so on. Now, what are the characteristics of Afro-Alfine? We have pressures and temperature decreases with altitude. Vegetation decreases with height of the mountain and the peak of the mountain you experience snow it's usually ice cap okay and then lastly we have swamp we've talked about the mangrove swamp you can see swamp in west africa you can see it in east africa you can also see it in south africa all right now they of course they are characterized with high temperature and rainfall you also have very high relative humidity and most of the plants you can find in swamp includes the um, white mangrove, red mangrove, and the what, raffia palm, all right? Now, this brings us to the end of this particular topic on basic ecological concept one. Now, before we go quickly, let's look at one or two evaluation or questions that will help us. Now, a look at this question. In which of the following biomes do the crowns of the trees from upper, middle, lower story, all right? If you go back to what we discussed, we said it is the rainforest zones, where we have the tropical rainforest. We said the trees exist in strata. I explained this, it exists in strata. So you have trees that are very, very high, you have trees that are middle, you have trees that are low, you have trees that are lower, just like that, as if it is in a staircase form. All right. Number two question says, which one is the correct order of occurrence of biomes in Nigeria? Correct order, please take note of that, from Atlantic coast to the northern boundaries. So you're moving from um, um, the aquatic and then you're moving to more of the terrestrial, all right, or arid uh, land, or le passé. Now, A, they said swamp forest, yes, it is close to the Atlantic, is close to the water or aquatic habitat. Then rainforest, southern Guinea savanna, northern Guinea savanna, and Sahil savanna. B says swamp forest, southern Guinea savanna, rainforest, Sahil, northern Guinea savanna. C said rainforest, swamp forest, Sahil, southern Guinea savanna, northern Guinea savanna. And D says Sahil, rainforest, Swamp Forest, Southern Guinea Savanna, Northern Guinea Savanna. No, the correct option that is correctly arranged in their correct order is A, which is Swamp Forest, Rainforest, because after the Swamp Forest, we have the Rainforest, 
After the rainforest, we have the Southern Guinea savanna. After the Southern Guinea savanna, we have the Northern Guinea savanna. And after the Northern Guinea savanna, we have the Sahil savanna. And if I may add, after the Sahil savanna, we have the desert. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using your exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can also learn particular topics of interest with different modes like study mode, uh, mock mode, and even practice mode. It, is also, it also has other features that makes learning very fun. Now, it is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels, hit the notifica notification bell, and share the videos to your loved ones and friends that will benefit from it. Bye for now.